Vorrei iniziare ringraziando il Presidente del Consiglio regionale e l'Assessore ai Servizi Sociali per aver ospitato questo evento e avermi dato l'onore di parteciparci e per inviare in calo un caloroso saluto a tutte le delegazioni presenti qui oggi, sia di persona che online. Cities and regions, we know it very well, are the engine of the global economy and home to a growing majority of the world's population. In the face of increasing global challenges from inequality to climate change, how can cities advance and inform more inclusive and sustainable models of urban development. We also know that the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is a key instrument for it, as it recognizes the interconnectedness of contemporary challenges and the need for comprehensive and participatory approaches to address them. Cities and regions have this important role to play in pushing forward societal change. They are increasingly embracing innovation and novel technologies. And thanks to the concentration of people, ideas and resources, they are leading the way towards solutions to global challenges beyond their own boundaries. Networks like Ellison play an increasingly crucial and recognized role in sharing global agreements, as we have seen already today. The importance of these networks in contributing towards a sustainable way of living for all is also part of the new urban agenda of the United Nations. The role of local and regional government is vital. This is the layer of government closest to the people, and it often has significant decision-making and spending power. With appropriate policies and supportive frameworks, resilient cities with improved housing and infrastructure can bounce back from the devastating impacts of disasters including pandemics. The Sustainable Development Goals are the new urban agenda, provide the blueprint to implement these measures. So, responsive programs and policies that strengthen and support families reduce the risks that are brought about by crisis they also allow individuals and families to flourish as they simultaneously contribute and respond to demographic shifts, migration and urbanization. A systemic perspective that highlights how various factors and trends intersect and interact with one another is key to creating those appropriate responses. And this systemic approach needs to be at top of state's agendas to accomplish the 2030 agenda and ensure that the sustainable development goals are met. We have reached to know very well through the present and recent crisis that strengthening family supports leads to improvements in the social and economic capital of individuals and concurrently the well-being of communities and states. Through coordinating multi-level responses, all individuals, including the most vulnerable individuals worldwide, can be reached and assisted in realizing their rights, capabilities and full potential. So it was the need to understand and face all this evidence that led to the design and promotion of the Benish Declaration 
back in 2018 to give way to the Inclusive Cities for Sustainable Families project as a worldwide alliance, worldwide, to reach and assist the rights, capabilities, and full potential. But the pandemic brought new realities and problems. The Venice Declaration was helpful for most of them, but it made us also realize we should incorporate the lessons learned during the pandemic. As I mentioned yesterday, it was, I think, surprising for all of us that when we concluded our meeting in Brussels some months ago, we all had the same two ideas in mind. We have a very good instrument, but we can make it better. We should make it a better instrument. Effectively sizing the opportunities and addressing the challenges cities and territories face would substantially improve their future outlook and only that is more than enough for your region to join the project or to consolidate your contribution if you are already part of it. So my purpose today is for those of you who are already part of this project to ensure that it will help us all a lot if we really focus on seeing the good practices we have, what we have learned, how we can have new initiatives, new ideas. But also for those of you who are not part of this alliance to consider this assembly to be part of it. That is to sign the Venice Declaration. And let me just very quickly tell you some points that justify this. First, your territory is a key site where innovation and technological advancement happens. How can you be sure that families will fit into that technological environment? Our proposal is the new updated Venice Declaration. Second, the appropriate management of new technologies and data is crucial. We need new tools and methods for better knowledge management and this is particularly important for enhancing the capacity to translate data into meaningful and relevant support to inform policy decisions. The collaboration among members of this project can help a lot to do this. Third, housing availability and affordability remain under threat due to changing acquisition and rental patterns, including new forms of financial investment that see strategic opportunities for the conversion of volatile assets into physical one in cities. And this challenges obsolete social housing measures, which would have to be rethought to reduce social polarization and conflicts. Uh, I think it's enough to quote the city of Marseille, which I can see here, for instance, to realize how important learning from their experience can be. Or urban settlements are essential hubs for both the implementation of global agendas and for citizens' engagement in policy decisions. While committed to providing a good life for the citizens, individuals can be pushed forward behavioral and institutional changes that will benefit all, taking an active role in global governance. 
Fifth, the fight for sustainability is greatly influenced but by what happens in our environment. We need to learn from each other also in this point. Sixth, cities and city networks have a large collective power to act and to scale up solutions quickly and efficiently. Their influence can be significant from supporting global commitments to providing efficient local solutions. The European Union has successfully created an environment of sharing of good practices between cities, both within, within and outside Europe. But obviously, all the work related to the Venice Declaration contributes in a decisive way to it. Seven, this can be a very good way to avoid the risk of polarization within and among those territories. And eighth, the close linkage between space, services, and people is at the core of territories' capacities to respond to people needs and to manage new challenges in a wider context beyond administrative boundaries and sectorial domains. A truly holistic approach is needed to optimize the provision of services and create an intelligent interaction between the city, the region and its inhabitants while maintaining and or enhancing the quality of life. In all of the points I've just mentioned, communities should play a substantial role in reshaping their futures. Greater efforts will be required to fully anticipate the impacts that these trends will have and to determine how to help communities become more resilient in the face of these charges. Strengthening local administrations and empowering citizens will contribute to building urban resilience to new challenges and better protecting human, economic and natural assets in cities, regions and their surroundings. The future, of course, is not set in stone and it's not easy to predict, but the present situation allows us to work for it in many ways. Some of them, and probably the most important ones for our work, are included in the Venice Declaration. I would say that it aims to foster discussion and helps policy, policy makers, individual cities and regions, and individuals to choose the best way forward. Building territories that work for families requires this intensive policy coordination and investment choices. Regional and local governments have an important role to play to act now to shape the future of their development and create opportunities for all. I hope today we start a new commitment to make this task a bright reality for the future of all of us who are present here and of so many others from other continents who are joining and will join us in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ignacio, for this uh, huge, uh, huge work. So uh, let me just uh, re remind you about the de deadline for the monitoring report of the 31st of March, which is a very important deadline. 